Hello and good evening, Chicago. Welcome back to another episode of Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, episode 120. My goodness, how in the world have we gotten to 120 episodes? On this, on this week's show, for the next hour, we are going to be bouncing all around the Chicago sports scene. We're going to be talking Bulls. We're going to be talking Bears. We're going to be talking Cubs. The White Sox might sneak in here, too, with some, with some future signings. And we're even going to dip down into the college realm a little bit and talk some collegiate hoops. We have got a big show in store for you tonight. The Bulls snapped a losing streak by beating Golden State. Now they're on their way to Paris to take on the Pistons. Ooh la la. We'll preview that matchup a little bit. The Bears, they've got themselves a new president and CEO that is being announced, yes, tomorrow. Fresh from the Big Ten, Kevin Warren. Very big news. He's got his own press conference. Does that mean anything for the product on the field and for the fan experience here the next few years? We will discuss that. The Cubs had their fan convention over the weekend. Anything really significant to take away, or was it really just a weekend long party? Either way, it's fine. And then also, we're going to follow up with my alma mater, Concordia University, Chicago, out in River Forest, and just check in on all the strange goings on and happenings with their men's basketball team all that plus more coming up here on chi town weekly buckling on up everybody let's have some fun And once again, hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I am your host, Adam Karnick. Excited to be with you for the next, oh, 57 minutes or so. Here, t- breaking down everything significant, at least in my opinion, and that's the one that matters. It's my show. In the world of Chicago sports, before we get too far into everything, though, of course, we do have our little bit of homework that we need to do, a little bit of our read. So we'll get you we'll get you through that here. IE Sports Radio, we have been around now for very nearly nine years for the last eight plus years. IE Sports Radio has been bringing you amazing content ranging from interviewing legendary athletes to building tailor-made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. All the while, we've continued to be by the fans, for the fans, and with your help, we are ready to take the next step. When you go to our website, iesportsradio.com, you'll see our Patreon link with five different tiers. The first one starting at just $5 a month. This donation gets you a shout out on every one of our shows. Higher tiers include IE Sports Radio merchandise, access to our podcasting university, and even a chance to be featured on a segment of our flagship show, The Defining Moment. Thank you all very much for continuing to make IE Sports Radio your direct feed for all that is sports. And do want to... Say acknowledge our Patreon supporters at this point, Bay Area Raised, M. Lois Great, Key to the Gate, and Anonymous. Thank you very much for your continued support of the station. And, of course, this station, IE Sports Radio, is available for you on all the major social platforms, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Just search at IE Sports Radio. You'll find it all there. This show is available for you also on Twitter, at IE I E S R C. That's where you can follow up and follow along with everything happening in the world of Chicago sports. I keep everything. I keep everything going there. And then, if you'd want to follow along with me personally on Twitter, you can find me at Adam underscore Karnick. And if you are listening live here on this Monday night on Spreaker, hop on into the chat room. Uh, Taryn Rodriguez is already there. Good evening, Taryn. 
Hop on in. We can interact and have some fun back and forth. That way, you get we get that instant feedback kind of a thing going on. Have some fun banter back and forth with with everybody else in the chat and also with me. We have some fun that way. Or if you're listening later on in the week as a podcast, whether it's on Spreaker or Spotify, YouTube, iHeartRadio, all the ways that you can follow along with the show. Or you just want to sit back and listen to me talk. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making this part of your week. Uh, I really do appreciate that. So without any further ado, let's hop on in to the show. Uh, Taryn already uh, challenging us with the French a little bit. How how you say bulls win in French? Uh, Les torrents gagnés. I'm sure that there was a Frenchman somewhere that just curled over and shook with uh shook with fear with the way i pronounce that but we'll go with it <laughs> so so thank you taryn as the bulls get ready they are on the, i believe they are on their way already to paris for that game they've got they've got the game coming up later this week but wanted to start off with their game yesterday against golden state so to set the stage of course the bulls it's just been it's it just continues to be an up and down weird season. The Bulls came into the game yesterday on a three game losing streak, had had lost at home to the Jazz, on the road in Boston, and then the oh excuse me, they had beaten the Jazz, I'm sorry. Lost on the road in in Boston, on the road in Washington to the Wizards. Ugh, that was a brutal one. That was one they had no business losing. And then lost at home to Oklahoma City. So, of course, the Warriors come in. They've got Steph. They've got Clay, And you're thinking, all right, this, yeah, what in the world's going to be going on here? How do they pull this one out? Still no DeMar DeRozan. Misses his third straight game after getting injured in Boston. And they turn around and they survive, giving up 42 points in the second quarter to Golden State. And they win the thing going away, 132-118. to Nikola Vucevic had easily, easily, easily his best game as a bull. Tied a career high with 43 points, 13 rebounds. Also had, also had for himself... Four assists, 18 of 31 from the floor in 39 minutes. Easily his best game as a bull. Picking up the slack left by DeMar being injured. Made up for the fact that Zach Levine wasn't his usual self from three. Just one of eight from three. Still managed to have 27 points in the game. But... Last night was about was about Vooch, and you kind of you look at it and you watch it and you go, man, where has where has this been all this time while he's been here? The, the tied his career high. The other time he scored forty three points was almost two years ago, back when he was still a member of the Orlando Magic. In fact, in that game he played against the Bulls. In that one, so the Bulls have been part of both of his 43 point efforts, but a huge, huge win for the Bulls, especially you know they when you look at it when they were down at the half by you know by as much as they were they had given up 62 points in the first half, 42. In the second quarter, you know, going going into the half down sixty two to fifty nine, and then once the Bulls took the lead in the third quarter, there was just no going back. You know, led the whole way after that point, after retaking the lead in the second half, never trailed again beyond that point, and just pulled away. They had a, a forty point quarter of their own. You know, forty points in the final quarter. To put the thing away and just and just pull away late. Not and and not a a great shooting night overall for the Bulls either. You know, just you know, fifty percent from the floor, but not from three. You know, made less than thirty nine percent of their threes 
for the game, but just kept pounding away, pounding away, and and getting the job done. So where are we at now with the Bulls? They're twenty and twenty four overall. We're just we're just over halfway through this season now at this point. Where where are we at with these guys? I am still confused. You know, you see them, their records against teams like Boston. Okay, they just lost to Boston last week, but they're two and one against Boston. They beat Brooklyn uh earlier in this earlier in the season, just just late last month. They're undefeated against Milwaukee. They went on the road to Philadelphia and beat the 76ers. All right, it was without Joel Embiid. They still, they beat the Sixers. They don't do that very often. Yet, they lose to Miami. They lose to Washington. You know, and they're getting ready to take on the Pistons now in Paris. This fun international matchup. I'm sure the wonderful sports fans of Paris are going, God, could we get a better matchup, please? Uh, can, can we change this? Can we, could we maybe get, uh, uh, pulling up the, the NBA schedule for Thursday real quick? You know, could we, could we maybe get, get like Warrior Celtics? Could they send them instead? Or, or maybe like, you know, like Net Suns, maybe we could get that one instead. That might be, that might be some more fun. Instead, you're getting, you know, the Bulls, who are a fringe playoff team at this point, and the Pistons, who are out of it, you know, to say the least. But I'm worried for the Bulls going into this game because they just don't play, they they play down to their competition. You know, they'll, they'll play up to their competition when they're playing some of the guys towards the top of the conference, or a team like Golden State that, okay, um... Um, right around 500, but when they've got Steph and Clay out there, you're usually, all right, you're expecting good things from them. The Bulls step up in that case, but when they play a team like Washington or, you know, these Pistons upcoming, bad things tend to happen. So I am nervous for them going into this game in Paris. Should be fun, though. It, it You know, it's always fun for the families and for the players when they're doing these overseas things. Uh, hopefully they're able to enjoy some of it and not and have it not just to be a business trip. You know, get to get to enjoy some of the sights and sounds of being overseas and, and playing playing in a different country, different culture, experience some of that. I hope they're able to take advantage of that and have some fun that way. But yeah, as we sit here, as, as Taryn rightly points out in the chat... The Bulls, they're right on the border. They are the 10 seed right now in the East. They would they would be in that play-in tournament. And they'd be the bottom of the play-in tournament. You know, you're you're you've got the biggest climb up just to make it into the playoffs at this point if you're the Bulls. I I'm, I'm not sure what to make of them. Clearly, something's going to have to give with this team as a whole. Um, there's been talk of maybe trying to sell, maybe trying to trade off guys like Vucevic or or Demar or anybody else. After after a game like this, though. Do you want to trade Vooch, you know, after you see what he can be? I mean, this is, that's what, that's what you wanted. That's what you were expecting when they made the trade for Vooch was, were more games like this, where he was just in rhythm, the ball was finding its way to him, and he was then making things happen offensively. You were you were hoping for more games like this from him, and they just haven't. They haven't appeared like you would think that they would, like you'd hope that they would. So 
where do you go with this team? And there's still the Lonzo Ball problem also where you you hear he's making strides, no pun intended, one way, but for every every move that they announce that it says it's oh he might be coming back, there's more news that yeah, but you know, they, they have a date in mind where they're going to be shutting him down. If he's not ready by a certain date, I, they haven't told us the date, but they have an end date here where, hey, if if Lonzo's not made significant enough progress, they're going to shut him down. So where are we at with this Bulls team? I I think what's going to happen, what I feel like is going to happen with this point, with the Bulls is they are going to play this thing out. At this point, I wouldn't expect them to trade, to sell off. I don't know how possible it will be for them to try and acquire. I'm not sure if they could do that at this point, who would be available for them. The the NBA trade deadline is, I'm looking it up here real quick. If Taryn, if you happen to just know it and can put it in the chat, Looking it up real quick here. It's it's February 9th is the NBA trade deadline. So we're coming up. We're we're not we're not that far from it. So I feel like at the, you know, February 9th, that's you know, we're three, three and a half weeks out. We're less than a month. You know, we're about three and a half weeks out from the NBA trade deadline. I don't know how aggressive the Bulls will be at buying. I feel like they're not going to sell. They're going to try to let this thing play out before anything else happens. That They're going to try and just play this out, see how it goes, and try to get out of it what they can and hope and the 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 ultimate hope is that if if Lonzo's able to come back, that's their big trade deadline acquisition. But we'll keep an eye on it. We'll we'll hunker in now that now that the Bears season is is done. And obviously, we're not going to be done talking about the Bears. We're never done talking about the Bears. But now that the Bears season, the football portion of the Bears season is done, we can focus in a little bit more on some of the other things going on in Chicago and that includes the Bulls. So we'll we'll keep a little bit closer of an eye on them. Before we before we we shift gears completely out of basketball though and, and do talk some bears. I do want to talk about bears coming up a little bit next here. But before we shift there over to the Bears, we're going to stay with basketball for a minute. I want to remind everybody of a story that I talked about last week. Uh, It happens to be my alma mater, Concordia University Chicago, their men's basketball team. We've got a little bit more follow-up. And I want to kind of remind everybody of the setup here. They have not played... the, The Cougars have... Their men's team has not played a game... here yet in 2023 their their last game I'm pulling their I'm pulling their schedule up right now (laughs) Uh oh Taryn was something something funny on my end Taryn or on your end (laughs) you say you were distracted by something funny and do do tell details details the Cougars have not played a game since their their last game was December 29th. Oh, something on Terran's end. Okay. Okay, something something funny on Terran's end. Okay. So the Cougars haven't played a game since December 29th. While they were in, they were taking on Whittier College out in out in California. And they had also taken on California Lutheran while they were out there. First two losses of the Cougars' season. 
before that, they were off to a fantastic start, one of their best starts in 40 years, starting 8-0. But they haven't played a game yet this calendar year. Why? They had six players wind up getting hospitalized while they were while they were in California. While they were in California, they had they had some players that missed curfew one night while they were out. And as a result, there was an extra practice added into their schedule. And it was a bit of an intense practice while they were out there. And as a result, six students wound up getting hospitalized. And I want to get the pronunciation of this correct correctly or try my best I got some help with it during the day so I wanted to make sure that I'm getting it getting it correct here they got they were hot they were hospitalized with rhabdomyolysis effectively what happened was they were working out so hard and so intensely that their muscles actually started to deteriorate and leak, leak fluid, which can get down into your liver and kidneys and can also cause swelling where the muscle would be and, and cause fluid to back up. It can get serious enough that it can be life threatening. Uh, it's it's uh, it it's sometimes I don't want to say commonly, but it, it it can sometimes be seen in CrossFit athletes who will try to go from zero to a hundred in their in their workouts. And if if anybody you know, <laughs> my my wife used to be a CrossFitter. And if you know anybody that does CrossFit, you know that that can be a very special kind of breed of athlete there. Just the the mentality there of don't quit. So they hold this extra practice on New Year's Eve, and it results in six players winding up being hospitalized with rhabdomyolysis. The coach, Steve Collar, he's in his fourth season with the team. He was the conference coach of the year last year. He was then separated from the team by the school while the school investigated. Coach has Coach Collar has has since been cleared. The athletic director, Pete Nan, wrote that while all six players, while they were hospitalized, they've all been released. They've all been released from the hospital. Quote, the health of each student will be continuously assessed on an ongoing basis and will be used to determine when each is cleared to return to practice. Once they receive formal clearance to resume activity, they will enter into a gradual return to practice and game competition over a period of two weeks. That seems a little fast by, admittedly, the very short amount of research I've been able to do on this. Uh, The the little bit that I've seen shows that you can sometimes need months to recover from this, but be that as it may. Continuing from, from Athletic Director Pete Nan, quote, We believe the intensity of the practice contributed to the student's illness when combined with other factors, including, but not limited to, an immediate return to full activity after an extended break, cross-country travel, rest, hydration, and nutrition. Dehydration can be a, 
a contributor in getting rhabdomyolysis. Head coach Steve Collar was temporarily removed from the team after the hospitalizations. Both CBS2 and the Chicago Tribune have reported that there have been no complaints against Coach Collar previously and that the team and parents have continued to support Coach Collar throughout this controversy. Again, from Athletic Director Nan, the university and athletic administration has full confidence in Coach Collar and believes that he has the best interests of our student-athletes in mind. Assistant Coach Rashawn Surlis will continue to oversee the day-to-day team practices and game competition in the near term. We look forward to Coach Collar's return to head coaching duties in the weeks ahead. He was set to return to campus this weekend and, and pick up his administrative duties from there. Now, the Cougars were scheduled to have a game tomorrow. That game has been postponed, officially suspended, postponed. They've had now five games get postponed. Uh, it's sounding like probably they will have to forfeit all five of these games. So they're going to go for what it's worth from being 8-2 and two overall to now being 8-7 and seven overall with their record. But they also had, there were four trainers with the team that all resigned here within the, within the last weekend. Now, to be honest, I have not seen if that was, how, how connected that was to Steve Collar coming back. I have not seen that. So just simply, they did have four team trainers resign as a result of this. But the good news is the the hospitalized players are no longer in the hospital. They're recovering. Coach Collar is back with the Cougars. We will see what that is right now. He has the full full support of the of not only his administration but also the parents and the team itself. Still, he has he has the support there. Uh, there was a quote I I wasn't able to find it right now, unfortunately, but there was a quote that I saw, and I'm going to bring back up the the story that talked about. Yeah, four four members of the of the athletic training staff has re, have resigned. There was a quote I saw from the athletic director that said that while the practice back on New Year's Eve was a contributing factor, Steve Collar, the head coach, had no intent to harm, haze, or punish the players as a result of this practice. So we'll keep our eyes on it. Um, I was actually kind of planning on, on talking some more about them anyway, because there is an awesome, awesome tournament that the, the Cougars take part in every year that the pandemic nearly killed. But that tournament is going to be happening here in, uh, at the end of the month. So I was planning on talking about that some more. So we'll we'll keep our eyes out in River Forest. We'll keep our eyes out on the suburbs and, and keep our eyes on this story and keep you up to date on it. All right. We are going to take a quick break. On the other side, we need to talk. We need to talk and discuss the Bears because there's a new president in town, a new president and CEO coming up from the Big Ten. We will be discussing Kevin Warren and the Bears next here on Chi-Town Weekly on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We'll be right back after this. What's up, everybody? This is Taryn Rodriguez. Are you a fan of volleyball? Are you a fan of Thunder Spikes? Then I have the show for you. 
Set Point, where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. College football, and do you want to hear a college football show dedicated to all that is college football, including junior college and the Triple CAA and the NJCAA, the NAIA, and the NCAA, including Division Three, Division Two, II, Division One AA in the FCS, and Division One Single A in the FBS? Well, then look no further. Join myself, Larry B, and my colleagues, Mr. H Town Blake, Blake Henley, and Mr. Christian Espinoza, each week during the college football season for the latest in college football on three and out college edition right here on IE Sports Radio, your directory for all that is sports. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Davidson. It's your boy, Natalia's Lock. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys should definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at Fastbreak ISR. D Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That gives you guys plenty of time on a Sunday. Tune in. Hello ladies and sinners, hello sports fans around the world, hello IE Sports family. This is Cal Henderson, the host of IE Vegas, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. If you folks are interested in sports in the Vegas area, if you're wanting to have a blast for one hour, every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, this is a show built for the Vegas sports fans where we feature the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Aces, and the University of Las Vegas, Nevada Rebels. Hopefully, fingers crossed, MLB team coming soon. Either way, if you folks are looking to have a blast for one hour each and every week, tune in Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you folks are interested in Vegas sports news, Go to our Twitter, at SinCities underscore I-E-S-R, and you can speak with me, the host, Kale Henderson, at Kale underscore Henderson on Twitter. At any time, be happy to reply. 
always want to reach out to our fans. Again, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Some say that Indiana is just a flyover state. Flatlands and cornfields, barns and country roads. What if I told you Indiana is the crossroads of America? What if I told you in all other states, basketball is just basketball? In Indiana, basketball is life. Crowded high school basketball gyms on a Friday night and every barn with a basketball rim and a frayed, worn-out net. If you're interested in the heartbeat of America, and if you're interested in sports, if you have Hoosier running through your veins, the Crossroads Pod with Aaron X is made for you. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports, each and every week, the Crossroad Pod covers all of Indiana sports. The pride of the horseshoe of the Indianapolis Colts. The blue collar, gold swagger of the Indiana Pacers. The relentless pursuit of a sixth banner for the Indiana Hoosiers. The swing of the hammer of the Purdue Boilermakers. The swoop of the Cardinals of Ball State. The summoning of the echoes of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. The growl of the Bulldogs of Butler. The intensity of an Indiana fever. The chop of the Indianapolis Indians. At the Crossroads Pod, if it is Indiana, we've got you covered. More than cornfields more than country back roads the crossroads of america join me aaron x every week it's nothing but net And welcome back into Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Adam Karnick back with you here, getting caught up a little bit in the chat room during that break. So Taryn was explaining the uh, the funny thing that had distracted him during that last segment. Uh, it was a volleyball clip on Instagram. Uh, someone hit the ball and then the defender used his butt to send the ball back to the opposing side. Uh his the volleyball version of the butt fumble. Taryn, you see, in my family sometime when we've got a lot of downtime to just kill, I'll have to try to explain to you my family's version of volleyball. We we refer to it as jungle ball. Suffice to say, that would be a thousand percent legal in jungle ball and in fact encouraged uh to to uh you know get style points in there so i i wholeheartedly i'm am on board with that so mike pat also joining us in the chat he was glad that he made it uh and bringing up that cj stroud has declared for the draft it it slightly hurts the bears uh uh, to me, that's just another option, another guy to be out there to hopefully entice some people to trade with the Bears for the pick. Hopefully, uh, some people fall in love with Stroud. You know, you look at his tape; he had very good tape from from this past season at Ohio State. Uh, interesting to see what uh, what. Uh, Justin Fields last season here in the pros has done towards the opinion of Ohio State quarterbacks. I know before Fields was taken, the opinion basically was, well, sure, Ohio State quarterback, Ohio State produces great collegiate quarterbacks, but they don't make good pros. Nobody coming out of Ohio State at a quarterback makes it in the NFL. Hopefully Fields is able to end that stigma, end that that notion a little bit here. And then Taryn giving us a quick update on Loyola men's volleyball. Uh, they are still undefeated. He's, of course, coming up right after us with a breakdown of all things volleyball on set points. So be sure to stick around uh, when we are done here tonight, here in about 20 minutes. He will, he will break everything down for us in the world of volleyball on set points. So be sure to stick around for that. So I did want to talk about some Bears a little bit now because there was big news last week. The Bears made it official. 
and it, it will be official official tomorrow at a press conference. Kevin Warren comes over from the Big Ten. He was the commissioner of the Big Ten for the last several several seasons, took over uh, in 2020 and as the commissioner of the Big Ten. He is now the Bears president and CEO. Ted Phillips, the guy who has had that position for 24 years, uh, had announced that this season, the 2022 season, would be his last. He's officially retiring sometime in February. Warren's going to take over. Officially expected to take over sometime in the spring. The thinking is probably sometime in April. Kevin Warren will uh, will officially take over and assume assume the duties of president and CEO. And by all accounts, this is a fantastic hire for the Bears. It's if for no if for no other reason, this is not a typical move for the organization. You know, you would expect. You know, Ted Phillips was a a promotion from within. It was somebody the family was comfortable with. You know, he was the he was the family's top attorney. He was their he was their best accountant slash money man, and. Because he served the family so well, they promoted him to the the job of team president. And so the you know the the McCaskey move would have been to to simply find somebody that they already liked, that they already knew and were comfortable with, and wasn't going to shake him up or or challenge the status quo any you know not too much. That was the move a lot of people would have expected. Instead, they go outside of the organization. They go to somebody that has already done the job before. You know, how often do we see that with the Bears, that they hire somebody for the job that A, has done the job before, and B, isn't just looking for a golden parachute to get ready for retirement, a la John Fox, head coach of the team, last decade, you know. Kevin Warren worked with the Vikings, He's worked with the Rams. He's worked with the Lions. He's got NFL experience running a team on this side. On the on the more focused on the business side of it. Not that he's not going to be involved in football. The what's being reported to this point is that Ryan Poles will no longer report directly to George McCaskey. He will now report to to Kevin Warren starting in April. So Ryan Poles does get knocked down a peg a little bit. That's how the Bears had always had it, was that the general manager reported to the team president, and then the team president reported to, the McCa- reported to George McCaskey. Ryan Poles was reporting directly to George this year. But I wonder, I, I've, I've seen some people online talk about how this is going to be, you know, just a fantastic move for the organization, great hire, all these wonderful things. And I don't disagree, but at the same time, I wonder how much effect he'll honestly have on the football product. Let's face it, the Bears just the Bears just bought a huge piece of land in Arlington Heights. You know, the former racetrack with the goal of building a stadium there. I would imagine that is going to be monopolizing Kevin Warren's time for the next five years. You know, that that he's... They didn't bring Kevin Warren in to babysit Ryan Poles, to micromanage the football team. Certainly, as the team president and CEO, certainly he'll be keeping an eye on what's going on with the football team and... You would expect that he would have the ability to to fire Ryan Poles. You know, he'd, he'd have that power and responsibility. 
over Ryan Poles, which does mean that makes this offseason even more crucial for Poles. You you are set up so well to jumpstart this franchise because you've got your quarterback, you've got a, a Brinks truck full of cash that you can dump at the feet of whomever you want. And you've got the number one overall draft pick. You want to talk about being able to be set up for success. That's what you'd want. That That's what you'd be doing. So certainly Kevin Warren will be keeping an eye on Ryan Poles. But I would imagine that for the next several seasons, Kevin Warren is going to be far more invested with his time in the Arlington Heights project. And he's a and he's a great man for the job. He has his, his thumbprints and fingerprints all over the blueprints for that stadium up in Minnesota, US Bank Stadium, which is a fantastic building. It looks so cool on the outside. It's on the inside, it it's one of the top stadiums in the league right now. So you'd love for Warren to be able to duplicate that success in Arlington Heights. But for right now, I I suspect that that's all it's going to be. So for fans who are, yes, now the Bears are going to, you know, now we're going to, we're going to kick some butts and, and, you know, and oh, things are going to change around here. Yeah, they might. But I don't think that he's going to have as much impact on the on-field product as you might think. You know, I don't, I don't know that he's necessarily going to be, you know, He's not going to be signing free agents. He's not going to be drafting players. He's not going to be... He's going to probably leave that to Ryan Poles for now. Now, if Poles struggles, then look out. But, you know, we'll see how this offseason goes as far as that is concerned. I did see, and I did have to just chuckle the plans that came out from the mayor's office from the city of Chicago regarding Soldier Field, the renovation project for Soldier Field, where they'd be making the access to the stadium better. They'd be putting a dome over top of it. They would be making it first class and, and, and all these wonderful amenities and making it a crown jewel in the city and the city's architecture and in the, the league and, and all these amazing things. And it just, I had to laugh. The best description of it all that I heard is from a coworker of mine. And he, he summed it up so perfectly i'm i'm pulling i'm pulling it up here it was in a group thread i'm pulling it up here so that he gets it so i get it perfectly it kind of feels like your ex sending you cute pics trying to get you to stay I, that is a thousand percent what it is this is the city of chicago going oh bleep they weren't kidding when they said they were going to move. Now what are we going to do? Quick, go back to all the notes, all the problems they were having with Soldier Field. And let's try to fix this really fast. Oh, here you go. We'll, we'll fix the stadium. We'll give you everything you wanted, Bears. Just please don't leave. And it's in reality, it's, dude, that ship sailed. You ignored us. You laughed. You mocked us. With, well, where else are you going to go? Rhetoric for 30 years. No, we're gone. We're gone. You do whatever you want with Soldier Field. The The biggest problem that exists now with Soldier Field is that you guys are still going to be in charge of running it. What's the biggest advantage from the Bears' perspective of owning the stadium out in Ar- of? The stadium out in Arlington Heights, they're going to be the ones owning it. They're going to be the ones in charge of it. They're going to be the ones that get to decide what they want to do. If they want to have grass, they can have grass. If they want to have turf, they can have turf. If they want to have a concert, 
during the season, then they can be the ones to decide to have a concert during the season. If they want to decide that from the months of September to February, nothing is scheduled there except for their own football games, they don't have to run that through anybody. They don't have to worry about Usher or 50 Cent or whoever it was that came in a couple years ago and put up a freaking house in the middle of the 50-yard line for three nights right before the Bears had to play a game there the next that following weekend. They don't have to put up with the BS of, well, we played a high school game here on Saturday and they tore up the turf and now you've got a game Sunday afternoon. How are we supposed to play on this? Uh, well, tough. Figure it out. You'll figure out a way. You guys are professional athletes. You'll be fine. They no longer have to deal with the Chicago Park District. That is the pr- primary problem the Bears have with Soldier Field and its new $2.2 billion renovation for Soldier Field does nothing to address that problem. So when I saw, when I saw those plans, I, it was my cousin sent it to me and it was, oh my gosh, this looks gorgeous. And was, yeah, it does. It's never going to happen. This is they're they're just desperately trying to get the Bears to stay, and it 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 made me laugh. I I could do nothing but chuckle when I saw it. All right. Normally at this point we would be taking a break, but I see how much time we don't have left. So I think we're just going to stay right here. Uh, I want to shift gears a little bit into baseball. The Cubs had their annual fan convention. Over the weekend, hint, hint, White Sox, fan conventions. Get your fan base excited for what you're doing. The White Sox, of course, uh, famously decided not to have their fan convention this year. First one since 2020. I, I was able to listen to the start of it live on my drive home uh, on Friday night over the over the weekend. Uh one of the funniest moments to me from listening to Tom Ricketts talk was when he was making the Cubs announcements for their, their newest members of the Cubs Hall of Fame. The crowd started chanting, Sammy, 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 Sammy. And and because you know Sammy Sosa is not going to be honored by the Cubs anytime soon. He is the... He is the black sheep of the Cubs family still because of the potential of, you know, using the corked bat and being part of the steroid era and all that. Uh, Ricketts handled it about as well as he could. He, he, he chuckled and said, yeah, Sammy's not eligible yet uh, and, and moved and moved on from there. They do expect to be competing for the division. And take that for what it's worth. Um, but there's a lot of optimism around the Cubs now after, you know, they went 74 and 88 a season ago. Um, but the second half of the season, they were really strong. Their, their pitching, especially, they were one of the best pitching staffs in baseball in the second half of the season. So, and you look throughout the, you look throughout the division, of course, the Pirates are still the Pirates. They're just, they're not wanting to compete until, you know, you're only allowed to spend $30 million a year on, on salary. Then they'll consider competing. Actually, probably what they'll do at that point is then drop their salary down to $10 million a year. But, uh, so the Pirates are still pirating. The Reds are once again rebuilding. The Brewers are... We'll see what they're up to. The Cardinals are... Yes, they're they're definitely going for it. And then, of course, they famously signed Wilson Contreras. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, just how competitive this division is. I... I believe them when the Cubs say that they should be competing for the division this year. You you look 
at how well they closed out the year. Their defense now with these moves that they've made, you know, getting Cody Bellinger playing center field, say a Suzuki in right field is an excellent right fielder. You've got um you've got Dansby Swanson now at shortstop, which which moves Nico Horner over to second base. They should be very strong defensively. And that was something that, that kept coming up through the convention was especially now that the shift has been banned in baseball that you, you can't just look at a spray chart and, oh, this guy hits the ball between first and second 70% of the time. Okay, we're just going to put our entire infield between first and second and then dare the guy to hit the ball someplace else and then laugh when he doesn't. You know, you have to actually, you have to play just a traditional defense now. You can't. You can't be so liberal, for lack of a better word, with your defensive alignments. You've got to have two guys to the left of second and two guys to the right of second base. That's that's important to have. That that puts an, a, a greater emphasis on your your defense overall as a whole. We'll see what they can do offensively. We'll see what they can do to. to keep putting, to keep the ball in play. You know, they they avoided arbitration here with a few of their players, Cody Hoyer, Nick Madrigal, uh, Nico Horner. I believe I saw Ian Happ as well. They they avoided arbitration with with some one-year deals. So lots of optimism going on with the Cubs as we are, not that far away from pitchers and catchers reporting. We're you know we're only about three and a half weeks away from the, the trade deadline in the NBA. We're only about that far away, maybe another week out, maybe four and a half weeks or so from pitchers and catchers reporting to spring training. So we'll be keeping a closer eye on on everything in the baseball world too. The the White Sox signed some guys to some futures as well earlier today so we'll you know lots of things ramping up for the baseball teams lots of things to to keep an eye on that is going to do it for our show here tonight want to say thank you again to our patreon supporters bay area raised mlos gray key to the gate and anonymous uh if you want to support us on patreon start at just five dollars a month you can find our link at iesportsradio.com it's right there takes you right right there to it again five dollars a month allows us to keep growing we've got 28 shows now in the in the holster we've got live calls that we do over on our mixler account so you can you can hear some of those taryn was on calling some of the nfl action this weekend on ie sports radio lots of things going on there thank you to big larry b keeping everything moving in the background at ie sports radio he's been very active bringing on some new hosts getting some fresh shows in the works for you here coming up so thank you to Larry for all the hard work he is doing behind the scenes. Thank you to Taryn and for Mike for hopping in to the chat room with us tonight. Be sure to stick around. Taryn Rodriguez is coming up right after us with Set Point, breaking down everything going on in the world of volleyball, professional, collegiate, all kinds of stuff going on there. Finally, thank you for coming and listening and making this part of your weekly routine. It is very much appreciated. I know you've got lots of options for your sports discussions. Glad that I can can be part of that for you. Next week, we are going to continue to keep our eyes on the Bulls. I do want to have some fun conversations about my alma mater, preview that tournament that they're going to be taking part of, the the Concordia Invitational Tournament up in uh, in Wisconsin this year. We're also going to talk some rugby. Rugby? Yeah, there's a Chicago rugby team. There's a, there's a rugby league. We'll be talking about that and more. We'll see you next week. This is Adam Conner for IE Sports Radio. Catch you next time.